1969, Fiat entrusted Bertoni and Pini Farina, with a study of two cars, which, in the early 1970s, will have to replace the company's entry sports cars, the 850 Coupe and Spider, and the 124 Sport. With the name X19, Bertoni created a small Targa, with central rear engine, designed by Gandini, which went into production in 1972, with the code X18. Pini Farina studies a Coupe Spider, with engine and front-wheel drive, internal name, Sport Young. Both, are developed on the platform and mechanicals of the Fiat 128. Let's go back to 1969. Lancia, managed by Carlo Pazenti, is going through a big crisis. It is taken over, for the symbolic sum of one Italian lira per share, by Fiat, which, on the one hand, saves it from bankruptcy, on the other, it brings home a prestigious brand, and, at the same time, eliminates a direct competitor. However, the Fiat management, finds a complex situation, it has a new brand in its hands, that has no plans for the future. In a short time, we then work on the definition of new models. The first of these, will be the Beta, a car, that was criticized by Cavasso's most loyal customers, but, undoubtedly, created with large investments by Fiat, which, in a short time, will structure an entire complete range of models. The Fastback Sedan is flanked by the delightful Capi, the highly original HPE, and the Spider. In the meantime, let's go back to Pini Farina, early 1970s. The X18 project, is upset. The mechanicals move to the rear, to create a more extreme car. His stylistic path, is followed by a young designer, Paolo Marchin. In July 1971, it changes its name. It is now called, X120. It continues to be developed, and in 1972, the definition of the shapes, and the spider variant, is reached. Road tests, also begin. Meanwhile, in 1974, a strange racing car, called Fiat Abart SEO30, took part in the race tour of Italy. Behind its shapes, dictated by precise competitive needs, the X120 hides. Let's go back again, to Pini Farina. The X120 project, has gone on, and the car is practically defined in every aspect. There is a lot of uncertainty. The energetic crisis, has left important aftermath, and all the car brands, have had to revisit their projects. Fiat, is also considering whether or not to propose another niche sports car, which, risks overlapping the X19. In early 1975, Johnny Agnelli, Renzo Carli, and Sergio Pinin Farina, meet to decide the future of this project. It seems that, Agnelli himself, suggested that it be branded Lancia. After placing the mask of a beta, on the front of the X120, the decision is made, the car, will be made in Cavasso. Shortly after, the new Lancia was presented, at the 1975 Geneva Motor Show, called, Beta Monte Carlo, it is a pure two-seater sports car, with mid-engined and rear-wheel drive. It is offered in two variants, the Capi, and a Targa, defined as Spider. the car arouses interest, also because, in that particular period, there are few brands, that courageously, presented purely sporty models, its design, is modern and proportionate, and recalls, in some details, the contemporary Ferrari BB. It is also, a more refined car, than the usual generalist manufacturer Capi. It is a more complete, more specialized model. It is the link, between the common sports car, and the unrivaled Gran Turismo. And, to accentuate his sporting soul, Sandro Munari, official driver Lancia in rally, is called upon, to act as testimonial, the personal and balanced style of the Beta Monte Carlo, will earn it the coveted 1976 Style Award, dedicated to the most beautifully designed car on the market. 1976, is also the year of his debut on the American market, under the name, Beta Scorpion. In the meantime, mechanical development continues, we are thinking of a more powerful version, equipped with the 140 horsepower 2.5 Boxer, that will debut shortly on the Lancia Gamma. But, the idea is immediately set aside, for costs and times. Supercharging, is also studied, both with the turbo, and with the volumetric, but, it will not have a productive follow-up, apart from a very limited series of Scorpion volume X, destined for the USA, due to some technical and constructive gaps, the Beta Monte Carlo, will undergo continuous aesthetic and mechanical changes. In 1978, production was suspended, the fallout of the crisis, considerably cooled interest in sports cars, and lovers of fast driving, turned to the new trend, that of compact sports cars. Fiat 127 Sport, Renault 5 Alpine and Gordini, and Golf GT, attract attention. But, 
For the two-seater Lancia, it is not over yet, in 1979, it is revived, the design is refreshed, there are several mechanical improvements, and it has lost the beta name. Now, it is called, Lancia Monte Carlo. In the same period, it was deployed in the Group 5 World Championship, with a very high-powered turbo variant, which will have its moment of glory. Also in the racing field, from the Beta Monte Carlo, comes the Lancia Rally 037. At the beginning of 1982, the Monte Carlo, went out of production, but, given the number of unsold units, it will officially remain on the list, until September 1984. A total of 7,576 units, were produced, of which, 1,623 kp, and 1,423 Spider First Series, with left-hand drive. The Beta Monte Carlo, is a compact sports car, with balanced shapes. The side view, is pleasant, taut in parallel lines, define the volumes. The pavilion, contrasts with the lower squared section, streamlined by the dihedral, that runs along the center line of the side, together with the shockproof band below, the windshield, is steeply inclined, and the taut rear pillar, ends at the edge of the tail. The side window, is made up of three crystals, the deflector, and the descending glass of the door, and a small trapezoid, that streamlines the hole, behind this, part the arch that crosses the roof. The side mirror, is the very famous, Vitaloni Californian. The drip, ends at the base of the front pillar, with the engraving of the Pininfarina logo, which, together with the shield, placed on the side shockproof strip, flaunts the authorship and production of the car. The front, is simple. A plastic profile, frames the headlights and grille, and joins with the black of the bumper. The headlights, have a design that is not too successful, not very aggressive. The spear shield, is in the center of the mask. On the sides of the bumper, the position lights, and direction indicators. On the first specimens, they have white transparent, subsequently, the direction lights, will be orange. The rear, is the most successful part, very sporty, it anticipates the design of certain GTs. The horizontal headlights, the same ones, mounted on the first series of the Lotus Esprit, help to give character to the overall view. They are housed on a molded plastic panel, with horizontal fins. The profile of the pillar, is a fin, that, from the tail, ends against the vertical rear window. The bonnet, hinged on the left side, is characterized by a central hump, shaped to make room, for the spare wheel, located in the compartment. In the center, an air intake, with parallel slits. From model number 1486, they will be partially closed, to avoid the stagnation of rainwater in the engine compartment. The body, is offered in two variants, coupe, with a metal roof in body color, and spider, actually a targa, with the canvas roof. This, can be folded and closed, in a special compartment, located in the central arch, is a Pininfarina patent, and is not the only one brought as a dowry by this car. The windshield, for the first time, is glued to the frame, and helps to stiffen the body. Authentic 70s design pieces, the alloy wheels, with a refined and successful shape. The available colors, are, white, red, aquamarine green, light blue, and the metallics, beige, green, light gray, blue. The general view, reveals a careful aesthetic and chromatic study, the seats, are a stylistic masterpiece, a pre-molded support structure, frames the seat, low and profiled, the slender backrest, and the headrest. On the first units, the backrests are fixed, from number 1938, they are supplied adjustable, on request. They are covered in a material called, TVE, elastic vinyl fabric, a high quality leatherette. It is available in beige, burgundy red, and blue. On request, cloth covers in the same color shades. The thick carpet, matches the exterior colors, the pleasantly designed dashboard, is spread over two levels, an inclined, plastic one, immediately under the windscreen, and which includes the air vents, the other, horizontal, padded, and upholstered in TVE combined with the seats, continues on the door panels, with two superstructures. The instrumentation, has a particular speedometer scale, with full scale at 250 km per hour. The steering wheel, is a two-spoke, of appropriate diameter. The rear panel, partially covered in TVE, ends with a horizontal shelf, that delimits the rear window. This, from specimen number 1318, is thermal. The front trunk, is very large, for a two-seater car, and is fully carpeted. Accessories on request, air conditioner, and electric windows. The mechanical layout, is from Pure Sport Car. 
The engine, mounted in the rear central transverse position, is the popular twin shaft, designed by Lamperty. It has a displacement of 1995 cc, it is a long stroke engine, powered by a Weber 34 DMTR double barrel carburetor. It delivers 120 horsepower at 6,000 revolutions per minute, and has a torque of 16.8 kilograms at 3,500 revolutions per minute. The gearbox is 5-speed. The braking system, has discs on the four wheels of 227 mm in diameter, and brake booster. The suspensions, are quite conventional, with a McPherson scheme for the front and rear. 185 70 13 tires, on 5.5 inch rims. The dimensions, are contained and the weight of 980 kilograms. In terms of performance, the Lancia declares a top speed of over 190 km per hour, and acceleration from 0 to 100 km per hour, in 9.3 seconds, and on the KM from standstill in 30.5 seconds. Average consumption, of 11 km liter. The driving position, a few centimeters from the ground, and well aligned, immediately clarifies the character of the car. It is a pure sports car, it has an excellent balance, which results in high road holding. Little understeer, mostly neutral, it has a good corner entry. The oversteer, manifests itself slightly in the exit phase, and is intuitively controllable. The steering, is quite precise and light, it weighs down, under load, in tight corners. The gearbox, has well scaled ratios, which allow you to fully exploit the engine's potential. Maneuverability is good, but tends to get worse, with use due to the particular delay. This is one of the very few congenital defects, of this model, the bushing of the joint of the transmission, which is worn out by the joint itself, and gives way. The brakes, are the least successful part, braking is powerful, perhaps too much. The front wheels, tend to lock, and especially in the wet, this phenomenon can become dangerous. They require a lot of practice and attention. Lancia, intervened several times, to remedy the problem, but the solution, will only be found with the second series. The second series of the Cavasso two-seater, was presented in early 1979. Aesthetically, the shape of the rear fence varies, with boxed uprights, and crystal panels, which can be defrosted, on request. The front, features a new grille, that reproduces the design of all the new Lancias. The tail panel, also changes, crossed, in the lower part, by a satin aluminum escutcheon that integrates the identification serigraphs. Lancia on the left, and Monte Carlo on the right, the new series has lost the beta suffix. The alloy wheels are new, larger and with a new design. The rectangular side mirror, is mounted on the deflector, and adjustable from the inside. Resize the range of colors, red pastel, and metallics, gray, silver blue, and beige. Inside, seats covered in cloth, with different stitching, in gray, beige, or blue. On request black or blue leather. The steering wheel, a three-spoke Momo covered in leather, and the gear knob, are new. The speedometer, has a thicker scale, and a full scale at 260 km per hour. The mechanicals, also have several improvements. The engine, has a different electronic ignition, and a new carburetor, and mechanical fuel pump. The torque, goes up to 17.4 kg at 3,400 revolutions per minute. The oversized alternator, and the air filter are moved to the rear of the engine. The brakes, are modified, the discs, have an increased diameter of 251 mm. The brake booster, is eliminated, and a mechanical braking enhancer, is fitted, plus, a regulator at the rear. The rims, with the same design as that of the Beta Coupe, are specific in the offset measurement. They have a 5.5 inch channel and a 14 inch diameter. Are fitted with Pirelli P6 185 65 tires. Some parts of the body, are in zincro metal, the declared maximum speed, is 195 km per hour. The second series Monte Carlos produced, are 951 in coupe configuration, and 564 Spider. Almost simultaneously with the presentation, in mid-1975, the Beta Monte Carlo, was marketed in England. Apart from the very first specimens, the others, will have a modification to the rear fins, the same as that which will be seen on the second series Monte Carlo. Obviously, he drives on the right. 455 Beta Monte Carlo Coupe, and 334 Spiders of the first series, and 172 Coupe and 253 Spiders of the second, with right-hand drive, were built. 
the particular shape of the Beta Monte Carlo, and the possibility of increasing sales, prompted Lancia to export the model to the United States, a market that is always attentive to small European sports cars. The American version, built solely on the basis of the Spider, first, had to be adapted to the strict local safety and pollution regulations. It also, had to change its name, since a Monte Carlo, branded Chevrolet, was already marketed in the USA. It will be called, Beta Scorpion. It is equipped with voluminous shock-absorbing bumpers, which lead to the modification of the front headlights, round, with large diameter, and electrically removable. The tail panel, is also modified, as is the rear hood, equipped with two additional air intakes, to cool the engine. This, is still the twin shaft Lampertys, but, with a displacement increased to 1756 cc, and equipped with a catalyst, it has power limited to 81 horsepower at 5,900 revolutions per minute, and torque of 12.3 kilograms at 3,200 revolutions per minute. This fact, combined with the increased weight, of about 60 kilograms, mortifies the performance. We try to make up, for it with a shorter final gear, but the declared data, are far from the spirit of the car speed of about 175 km per hour, and acceleration from 0 to 100 km per hour, in about 12 seconds. At the urging of local importers, a very limited series, was created, equipped with a Volume X compressor, marketed in 1981, shortly before the cessation of sales, 1801 Scorpion, were built. At the 1974 Giro d'Italia, Fiat fielded, in addition to the X19, and 124 Abarth, a strange car, called, Fiat Abarth SE030. It is a two-seater coupé, with an ungainly and rough look. The rear longitudinal engine, is the V6 of the Fiat 130 coupé, with a displacement increased from 3,200, to 3,500 cc, and 285 horsepower. The gearbox is the same as that of the, De Tommaso Pantera. The car, driven by Giorgio Piada, will take second place overall. Behind the factory Lancia Stratos Turbo, the SE030, was the racing variant of the X120, and was a candidate, together with the X19 Abarth, to become Fiat's flag, in the World Rally Championship. The change of brand of the model, from Fiat to Lancia, and the marketing choice of creating the 131 Abarth, made the prototype shelf. In 1979, a new regulation of the Group 5 World Championship, was established. After the experience with the Stratos, Lancia decided to participate, with the Beta Monte Carlo. The project, was carried out by engineer, Johnny Tonti, with very advanced criteria, for the time. Aerodynamics and design, were developed in the Pininfarina wind tunnel. The CX, was variable from 0.32, to 0.40, based on the aileron adjustments. The bodywork, was in fiberglass and Kevlar. The mechanicals, which by regulation, had to keep the original suspension scheme, had a completely revised setup, for high performance. The engine, was derived from the twin shaft Lampertys, with a displacement reduced to 1425 cc, to fall within the regulation coefficients. 16 valve head, derived from the 131 Abarth. Mechanical injection Chill Fisher, Derbu KKK, the first units, boasted a power of 330 horsepower, increased to 370 and, subsequently, to 400 horsepower at 9,000 revolutions per minute, with turbo pressure at 1.2 bar, and 450 at 9,500 revolutions per minute, with pressure at 1.5 bar. In 1982, the displacement will be increased to 1773 cc, with power close to 490 horsepower. The gearbox is a frontal graphs made by Galati. Large diameter Lockheed brakes and 225-25 front and 305-50 rear tires on 16-inch Campagnolo ribs. The car weighs 780 kg. Based on ratios and aerodynamics, it had top speeds between 270 and 315 km per hour. Driven by Patrese, Cheever, Alberito, Gonzani, Gabbiani, Rural, won the title in 1980 and 1981 against top-level rivals, such as the Porsche 935 considered unbeatable. Simultaneously with the development of the Group 5, Lancia is studying the successor to the Stratos and rallies. The first prototype, called Abarth Lancia SE037, came from Monte Carlo, in 1980. In a short time, it evolved into Lancia Rally 037. Lancia's first Group B, it made its debut in 1982, and will be world champion in 1983, 
going down in history as the last two-wheel drive car, to win the coveted title. The Beta Monte Carlo, is a beautiful example of an Italian sports car, the son of a good period, for ideas and planning. A car at the same time misunderstood and revalued only recently, a fast car, pleasant to drive, fun and robust in its mechanicals, which, with a few tricks, becomes very reliable and safe, among the weak points, the braking, and the gearbox bushing, already mentioned, as for the bodywork and interiors, the door hinges, that tend to loosen and yield, the fragility of the door that covers the hood, the backrest supports that break, the light switch, the specific details of the bodywork and interiors, are practically unavailable. While for the mechanics, since these are components common to other cars of the Fiat group, there are no problems, it is an interesting car, from a collector's point of view. They have built a few, but it is estimated that a good percentage, are still alive. Despite the propensity to rust, the use in competitions, and the deplorable tendency, in recent years, to dismantle specimens in good condition to make copies of the 037, availability is good. It is historically important, as it is the first car to be entirely developed and built, in the new Pininfarina plant in Grugliasco. It is also, the car that inaugurated the new wind tunnel of the design house, but above all, it is a beautiful car to use, perhaps on some nice curvy track, where it offers high-level Gran Turismo driving sensations, at affordable costs. But not for much longer.